Hello Council Bluffs Public School students, I'm Mindy Morgan, a garden educator here and on behalf of all staff and volunteers we would love to welcome you to Lawrence and Gardens. Uh, in today's video we are going to talk about some featured sculptures in the pollination investigation event going on and we're also going to discuss uh, some of our pollinator friendly gardens that you can view. We'll also discuss the importance of pollination and what we can all do to attract bees, butterflies, and other pollinators to our own backyards. Thanks again for tuning in and welcome to Lawrence and Gardens. Hi, I'm Kate and I'm also the garden educator here at Lawrence and Gardens. Have you ever been here before? Let's talk about what you can expect to see when you arrive this summer. When you come to explore, there are more than 20 outdoor gardens full of incredible plants and fascinating wildlife for you to enjoy and discover. The Hitchcock Coons Victorian Garden, for example, is a lush, formal space that resembles what gardens looked like during the rule of Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland from 1837 to 1901. This period marked the height of the Industrial Revolution, and many working class families were finally able to enjoy a hobby only the wealthy could once afford, and convert their vegetable plots into beautiful, relaxing seating areas. As a rule, all Victorian gardens had to include trees, flower beds, vines, seating, and ornaments. Our garden features annual and perennial plants, a place to sit and enjoy the view, and artifacts from older buildings in Council Bluffs in Omaha. With so many flowers in bloom, you'll see several busy pollinators collecting nectar and pollen. Garden in the Glen is another comfortable place to relax, especially on a hot summer day. With the trees overhead, you can cool off with the shade-loving hostas and ferns while listening to a peaceful, meandering stream and walking across the stone bridges. What pollinators would you expect to find here? To give you a hint, the small birds that beat their wings about 50 times per second love tubular hosta flowers. Other gardens to check out are the Arrival Garden, Woodland Trail, Festival Garden, Woodland Waterfall, Arboretum and Oberman Bird Sanctuary, Model Railroad Garden, Children's Garden, Japanese Park, Herb Garden, Founders Garden, Conservation Discovery Garden, Rose Garden, Tree Peony Garden, English Perennial Border, The Color Burst, Spring Flowering Walk in Song of the Lark Meadow, and finally, The Garden of Memories. What gardens are you most excited to see? Finally, on the way back to your car or up to Kennefick Park to see the Union Pacific Railroad locomotives, take one last look at the arrival garden. Pollinators like bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds have many opportunities to collect pollen and nectar here from plants like butterfly bush, red valerian, yarrow, and a variety of colorful annuals. So what other pollinators might you expect to see at Lawrence and Gardens? Uh, depending on the time of day, uh, we'll not only see bees and butterflies, but we could also see birds, moths, beetles, and other insects too. Uh, so what is pollination and why is it important? Let's pretend we're all members of a bee colony foraging for food. We're attracted to flowers because they provide the nectar and pollen our colony depends on for survival. While buzzing around on colorful flowers with pollen stuck to our fuzzy bodies, we may accidentally brush up against pistils, female reproductive parts, and stamens, male reproductive parts, and without knowing it, transfer pollen from one flower onto another. This plant will then be able to produce fruit or seeds. As bees, we are so good at pollination that some farmers will hire commercial beekeepers to transport whole hives on semi-trucks to their blooming fields so we can help them be as profitable as possible. About 35% of food crops and 75% of flowering plants around the world uh, depend on pollinators to reproduce. Uh, in fact, scientists estimate that one in every three bites of food that we eat um, is, exists because of pollinators. But besides food crops, uh, plants that provide medicine, spices, fuel, and fiber also depend on pollinators for reproduction. 
already wild bees don't exist in parts of southwest China because of habitat loss and excessive pesticide use. Now humans are responsible for hand pollinating pear and apple orchards with paintbrushes. For now, this technique is working on a small scale, but there are not enough people on the planet to pollinate all of our food crops by hand. These situations are very scary, but we can empower and motivate ourselves to take action. So let's start small. How about getting our hands dirty, uh, planting flowers in our backyards at home or in containers on our balconies? We can also provide fresh water for pollinators to drink and shelter too. Visit Iowa State University's Extension and Outreach website to download a list of native plants for free. You can also join an initiative like Blank Park Zoo's Plant, Grow, Fly. The zoo is located in Des Moines, but everything you need to know to start helping pollinators in Council Bluffs is on their website. You can then register your own garden or a garden you and your classmates create at school. Check out the links to these sites below the video. Finally, you can become an ambassador for pollinators. Use social media to share your knowledge and photos with friends, family, and people in your city. Uh, you can also encourage shopping for local produce and using less pesticides. Um, so there's something all of us can do to uh, help our pollinators out. So um, now let's take a look at pollination investigation going on now until September 7th. Hi everyone, my name's Shelby and I'm the volunteer coordinator here at Lorenzo Gardens. During pollination investigation, our goal is to bring attention to invaluable pollinators and inspire others to save their populations. Our talented staff, along with one outside team member, teamed up to create 21 impressive sculptures for you and your families to discover. Each of these impressive pieces of art took anywhere from 10 to 25 hours to finish and are made of clay, wood, plastic, chicken wire, and paper mache, along with a variety of recycled materials. Come see if you can find each one and guess what the artists used to create their sculptures. One of the sculptures you will find is the lesser long-nosed bat. Did you know that this animal's tongue is three inches long? That's the entire length of its body. These bats are the unsung heroes of the fragile desert ecosystems in the southwest United States and northern Mexico. At night, they are attracted to fragrant cacti flowers and use their long tongues to lap up the nectar and unintentionally cover themselves with pollen. Pollination then occurs as they continue feeding, flying from flower to flower. Another interesting sculpture is the tumbling flower beetle. When threatened by a predator, this beetle will tumble and move erratically in order to escape danger. And unlike the lesser long-nosed bat, this insect feeds on pollen instead of nectar. Magnolia trees, like what we have on display in the conservatory and in the magnolia grove surrounding the store's gazebo, were among the earliest flowering plants and beetles were some of the only pollinators that existed millions of years ago. As these insects pollinated magnolia flowers, they used their mouth parts to chew versus gather pollen and so the petals evolved to be leathery in order to survive the damage. Next time you see a magnolia in bloom, compare its petals to other flowers to really feel how tough they are. Please stop out and visit us at Lawrence and Gardens this summer. We want to know which sculptures you love and we also want to know which gardens inspire you. We'd also love to see photos that you take of the pollinator gardens that you create at home. Once again, check out the links below to Blank Park Zoo and Iowa State University's Extension and Outreach. Below the video, you'll also find a quiz to test your knowledge, more helpful websites, and titles of a few incredible books. These are excellent resources for those who want to dive deeper into pollinator gardening. Thank you so much for joining us today at Lawrence and Gardens, and we hope to see you soon.